Welcome back to the channel. I know I've been kind of absent a little bit on the Apache build, but we just had a great time at the Evil Shinvig last weekend, but we are back out on the Apache. It is Sunday evening currently, and I was out here working on this thing kind of off camera, trying to get this little frame cap. We ran out of gas. And Sunday's around me, I can't get a bottle filled, so my grandpa, he was nice enough to come, grab that tank, and he's gonna get it filled tomorrow, and we'll get on that. But without having any kind of gas or anything like that, I'm gonna go ahead and start trying to figure out some mounts. We can at least get stuff started and cut. I'm gonna utilize this wishbone here instead of doing like a traditional Watts link or something like that that most people do with a parallel four link. So my thoughts are we're gonna have this thing. Basically, it's gonna be like this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this shorten it back to where it measured to the length of these and this is a cast housing on top of this so i'm not really wanting to weld to this so my thoughts are i've got a tubing roller behind me thought about trying to roll us a little tube up and over this and then we can have two tabs going off and catching our heim here let's start trying to roll a tube never done it in my life so bear with me and we'll see what we got and then we can start trying to get this thing kind of figured out. So I want to get just a rough idea of how much tubing we're going to be needing. I'm going to say roughly 30 inches, which that's going to be more than enough. Um, I think on that tubing bender we're going to want to go just a little bit more just because I think there's going to be some that won't get completely rolled and I just want to make sure we got a nice even smooth bend up through here. So this is the Harbor Freight tubing bender. Like I said, I've never used this thing. I've had it for a few years now, so it'll be good to actually get some usage out of it. Currently we have the inch dies in there. The tubing we're gonna be using is gonna be inch and a half, so we'll fix these up here. I've heard some people say that these are really nice, and I've heard people say that they have a lot to be desired, so we will see. So there's our inch and a half drive roller that we got. It's already got a lot of play there, I don't really care for that. Need to find the handle. Goodness, freaking spider arachnophobia out here in the shop. We're just gonna start working that thing back and forth until we get a little bit of a bend. We'll be good to go, hopefully. I said 30, I'm gonna do 35 inches just to give us a little bit of extra since I don't know exactly how much that's gonna need to, cause we're not gonna be able to roll all the way to the end cause the dies, if you do that, I think it would shoot off there. So I'm not a tubing rolling master. So we'll just have to play with this thing as we go. As you can see the drive wheels already going. So I've got our three quarter ratchet here. I'm just gonna apply some pressure to it. And go right about to there. Ooh, almost too far. And you just keep cranking the pressure up. Like I said, this is gonna be the first go for this for me, so I don't know how it's gonna turn out. I don't know if it's even gonna work. <laughs> I'm excited to try it. Need me another clamp later on this side, I can tell you that much. I've seen people where they also, they've got a pipe threader at a Harbor Freight and Swag Off-Road makes all this stuff to make this thing awesome. They even make it like a bottle jack set up. But I haven't used this thing enough to worry about any of that just yet, so we're just rolling with it, literally. Oh no. 
<laughs> so you already fell off a little bit. They also, I'm sorry, I'm giving you like the updates on this, but they make a thing where the wings will come out farther and that'll help you bend this thing a lot quicker because you're going to have a lot more leverage. And if this seems like something I'm going to be using a lot, we'll probably snag on that. Let me know, would that be something you'd be interested in? Seeing me upgrading tools like this? Because I really kind of nerd out on tools. It's like I'm driving a 29 Ford. <laughs> Big old wheel. Shoo. You don't need to go to the gym now, man. I'm gonna keep cranking. I'll catch up with y'all here in a minute. This is gonna take a little bit. <laughs> All right, so it is the next day, and after many of hours of rolling this tube, I think we finally got enough of a radius in it to where it's gonna work to what we are wanting to do here. I will say, if you get the Harper Freight tubing roller, it is not for the faint of heart. That was one hard piece of tube to roll, so I'm definitely gonna look into that Swag Off-Road kit to extend those wings out just a little bit to hopefully help with that. Moving forward, this is obviously just sitting down on our axle right now so what we need to do is kind of cope in a radius on either end of this so it'll sit down on our axle tube and then we can make our mount right here for our wishbone so what i've got is a torpedo level here i'm just going to stick it kind of I'm going to try to stick this on the rear end like that and I'm just going to kind of scribe a line on this thing and then we can start from there kind of getting this thing a little closer I hope. This is the first time I've ever really messed with tube or anything like that so I'm going to be doing trial and error stuff. Hopefully we don't mess this piece of tube up because like I said that took a really good amount of time to do. All right, those lines should get us hopefully in the ballpark. And then from there, we can kind of start working on getting this thing down. And hopefully it'll work. Cross your fingers. I can live with that. We can come in with our flap disc now and just start kind of cleaning this thing up and I think we'll be looking pretty dang sweet. This side fits really good. Uh, we need to take just a little bit more off of the end of this one so it'll sit down a little bit. Now, I'm thinking about actually doing another tube kind of similar right here on the rear end. It's basically gonna go around like that. And then we'll mount our bags right off of here. And then we'll just have a plate up here and that'll be super simple. I was gonna do a cantilever setup, but I just don't really feel like doing all that, to be completely honest with you. I like simple stuff, and that would be pretty simple. Just making another tube like this. Well, we got that thing all glued in there. Um, I'm pretty rusty on the TIG welding still, but I'm out of CO2 right now. I went to, our grandpa went to air gas yesterday and they didn't have any, so we gotta wait till Wednesday. I've never had a gas supply company not have 7525 in stock, but unfortunately they did not, so. Just busted out the TIG welder and got that thing knocked out. I think that's pretty cool how that hoop turned out. The old Hobo Freight tube roller over there worked out pretty sweet. Hopefully you can kind of see what we got going on now. Um, we're going to be hacking this wishbone down right about here. And then we'll relocate that heim joint down to here. 
and like I was saying we're gonna make it roughly the same length as this so even if we gotta stick that up on top of this bar here that'll be fine but we're gonna have to calculate all of our tabs and everything like that so everything stays the same through the range of motion because it's basically going to be on a big arc going up and if this is shorter or longer it's going to be trying to push or pull on that arc and we do not want that so we're going to get some tabs and stuff like that gonna have to start making them up and then we can start nailing that thing down hopefully so i got this thing capped off right here but as you can see we got a vacant spot here so I'm going to walk you through real quick how I made this. I basically made this cardboard template out of an old beer box here. Tossed her on that and I cut her out. So I'd like to get this other one made real quick. That way when we start making our brackets and everything like that, we can tie into those if we need to. Because I think that's probably what we're going to have to do to make our back tabs. So let's knock this thing out real quick. From there, we'll start making our three link mounts and everything like that. So after doing some measurements after last night, um, we're actually going to have to lop these things off here on either end because we're not going to be able to get that 19 and a quarter inches like these are with just putting this up here. It's going to still be too long. It's going to be like 21 inches. So we're going to still cut off back here, but we're also going to cut these off right here. And instead of having them in line, I'm actually going to turn them to where it's gonna if it sees any pushing that way I feel like it might help it out a little bit and it might help everything kind of articulate a little bit and it'll look a little bit better because I don't like how that is kind of coped in there at an angle kind of looks weird so we're just gonna take that bushing end and turn it straight like that and then our tabs will be sticking out hopefully in theory this works I don't know we'll see though seen went ahead and cut these in at an angle again that way everything's gonna be parallel because I got to thinking about it and to measure these things out with them being straight it's just gonna be a little bit different it wasn't gonna land just how I wanted it to so just went back in shortened these things up made them straight so hopefully we'll be good to go after that All right, I got the neck cut off this thing, and it's actually gonna be better because when you design a wishbone, from what I've read, it's best to keep your heim or bushing or whatever it is real close. Having a big neck on it like that is a big weak point, and it's got a lot of leverage to bend or break that. So this is kind of a no-no to have a big neck on it like that. So next thing we need to do, need to come in here, get that weld kind of cut off of this thing. And then once I do that, I can pull that threaded sleeve out. We can slide it into this tube here and then weld it out. Then head over there and start mounting everything up. Good morning, it's Sunday. Got the coffee going out here. Um, trying to finish up the wishbone currently and got it all welded back in here. So next thing we need to do is start making some tabs and mounts over here and then we can start stabbing this thing in. So in the spirit of our recycle and reuse phase we're going on the Apache, I found these lower spring perches. It's for like a leaf spring. It's a shock mount here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut these two tabs here off and then we'll be able to hang them off here and then that'll be our forward mount and then all we're going to have to do then is come up with something 
I'm going to kind of, I think, tie a piece of metal across here onto this cross member and to that cap we made. And then that's going to catch our lower two links. And then we should be pretty solid on this thing. Let's go get these knocked off and then we can start mocking up this front one. Put that piece right back where I found it along with all my other scrap. I'm telling you, it's important. Just hang on to things you never know. You're gonna use stuff, I promise. Even factory parts like that. You can get these little tabs in a couple minutes and you don't have to mess with doing all that stuff and fabrication and everything like that. Had to drill us a hole just a little bit bigger. That's a 5 8 bolt that we've got in the front of that. And this was set up for like, I don't know, looks like to be about a half inch bolt so getting this hole just a little bit bigger that way we can get these things mounted up all right got this thing all in here um, our tabs came up just a little bit short, so our heim is actually hitting our bar, but right now I currently have a piece of just sheet metal in here, and that's going to space that thing up enough to where we won't have any interference. Um, now, we are going to have just a slight gap. I'm talking like a sixteenth of an inch or something, but that'll be pretty easy to fill as we burn them tabs in. So, what I need to do now is I've got this thing pretty in line with these two bars here so now i just need to pull two measurements get it centered in here and then once we do that we can level this thing up to match our top bars here is going to be my game plan and then everything should travel together i'm actually really happy with the way this old apache's coming out it's like i was saying i'm just reusing a ton of these parts so and this thing's coming out pretty sweet i'm pretty excited and slightly shocked I thought it was gonna be kind of janky looking and I'm sure there's gonna be plenty of people out there that tell me it is so that is okay though now that we got this thing sitting pretty much where we're gonna want it I've got these four pieces of flat bar and I plan on just making some link tabs out of it then we'll come in throw us a gusset in there and whatever we need to do to strengthen this I've got these link rod end bushings i got them from thor bros um, i just checked the other day they're actually sold out still but these things are lifesavers when you're mocking up everything because what it does is just it's like a dummy bushing basically it's just a slug of aluminum slides right in your housing that way whenever we go to start fabbing all this stuff up and welding stuff up we can weld these tabs all the way out with our real deal bushings actually being in there like that and not have to worry about burning everything out so that's pretty cool because everything i don't know if you've welded anything before and you don't have something in it sometimes they tend to warp around so this way it won't do that i'm gonna start just kind of throwing these things up here and kind of get where we need to be on these tabs cutting them in we'll stack them all together once we do that and we'll drill a hole this is a 9 16 bolt, so that's what we'll be drilling to. And they have these little washers here. And there's all kinds of different sizes in there. So if you get 5 8 half inch, whatever size bolt you're running, you slide it right in there like that. And then it'll line you up awesome. That's what I used on my 64, and it's a killer little kit. So instead of trying to make like a funky piece to go down in this void, I just went ahead and I made up a plate here that's going to just be like that and then we don't have to make such a crazy angle to get our tab lined up here and then once we get all that welded in we can just start getting our tabs figured out where we need them and we'll be good to go all right i got this kind of cut it a little bit of a taper here so i'm just fitting it up here and it's going to work out pretty sweet next thing i'm going to do i got to round these corners obviously to kind of match what we got going on with our bushing here and then I'll just mimic the same thing on this side. And I think we'll be pretty solid. Try to get this thing lined up pretty good. You can see we got our line there. So we'll just cut that around and then 
we'll be ready for this side. Then we just got to make one for this side, drill some holes, weld it all together. Coming right along. Alright, I'm going to use a transfer punch and our mock-up bushing here to get our hole established. Or at least to get where our hole is going to be in relation to this. Use that. All the transfer punch is is basically a center punch that it'll go down in this hole and it's real tight. And then that'll give us a perfect hole for where we need to drill this thing. So our bushing will be pretty much right where we want it to be, which would be right about there. Now we just need to drill these out and we can mount them up and then start on the outside tabs. making these outside tabs it's basically the same thing we did on the inside tab so I'm gonna spare you and get after it Alright, so we got everything all the way welded in now. The last thing I would like to do is I would like to get this thing just a little gusset in here. Something, I don't know, just a little something to kind of help these because that is a tall tab and I don't want it to, because this is where our side to side force is going to be hitting. So I would like for this to be pretty dang rigid and we might even end up boxing something in over here. Because you know all the donuts we'll be doing in this thing, we want to have it pretty rigid. So I got this plate, this three inch plate here, and I think that's actually going to work out pretty solid. So I'm going to cut us two up here and then make them, weld them in, and we'll see how this suspension cycles. Alrighty, I'm going to let this thing down, see what our range of motion looks like here. Looks pretty solid. Thanks for sticking in here for this one. Uh, next week I'm going to try really hard to get bags on this thing and maybe even shocks and then we're going to be pretty dang close to getting this rear wrapped up. Um, it's unfortunate, I've got something in the works I've said in other videos for the front but it's taken a little longer than anticipated, I guess. So, fingers crossed, we might get that thing sooner than later. But if not, we're gonna hop over to the 67 because it actually needs to be fired up, broken in, and then we can move forward on that thing too. So, plenty to do going forward. So, if you're not already, hit the subscribe button so you can come hang out again. And you can give me plenty of feedback on what I should have done what I need to do different but if you like this video hit the like button give me an old thumbs up and I'll see you on the next one